you ask me what my favorite giant snake is to keep, there's no doubt I would say it would be a green anaconda like Ivy. She's just so incredible. I mean, look at her. She's super tame. She's super inquisitive. A beast. She's an impressive animal. That is a big snake. There's no doubt about it. But there are some downsides to keeping big anaconda. They need a lot of room. You know, and although they're inquisitive and they'll come up and hang out with you and just kind of be amazing animals, the fact is, is that they are kind of a little bit hard to keep when it comes to water. Big water basins. They like to go poo and pee a lot. They musk a lot. They urinate a lot. And they're definitely a lot of work compared to some other big snakes. We clean her almost every day. Depending, especially if she eats, you know, she pees for like seven days straight. So a lot of time we have to drain it, clean it, scrub it. Whenever they pee back there, you know, we got to go back there and clean it. Well, they shut out. It's also a giant pain in the butt trying to get her out because she is so big and so heavy. You think that she's going to get twice as heavy, if not more? 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 But that being said, my favorite all-time snake would certainly be my girl Ivy. Because she is just absolutely wonderful. My goodness gracious. And you've got to remember, she's only about 120 pounds right now. She's going to get a lot bigger, up to 300 pounds. So I can't even imagine what she's going to be just like. look at how big that snake is right there. That is a giant snake. But anacondas aren't for everyone. So let's go down the list of other giant snakes that might be right for you. Just this part alone, she's so heavy. I mean, just look how thick, I can't even touch my thumbs. It's bigger than my head, and that's saying something. So basically, if giant snakes are your thing, there's a couple options, right? I mean, obviously, you've got the green anacondas, and again, they may not be right for you. They definitely take more work, but I just get the most enjoyment out of my relationship with my green anaconda ivy, obviously, and all of them, Verde, Ariana, and even the babies we have now are really become super tame. And of course, this is Ivy's baby. This girl is named Annie. She's the one we're keeping. Of course, Annie the anaconda. You gotta have an Annie the anaconda right here. But look right at how right cool right they are, and like I had mentioned, they really tamed out. I mean, just like their mom. They're puppy dogs like you can't believe. Remember when they were first born, they were little biters. It didn't take long for handling them and they just became just as curious as Verde or Ariana or Ivy. Again, my experience with the anacondas, my personal experience is that if you work with them, they're really good. And again, we talked about those generations, right? Like every generation you breed them in captivity, they get a little bit more docile. So it is gonna be great to see how these guys go. And who knows, maybe a generation after this, they're gonna be even more docile. But then you also have a couple other choices. African rock pythons are giant, but most people don't wanna keep African rock pythons that's because they're pretty defensive. They haven't been kind of domesticated, and that's one of the things you've got to think about. An animal like Perdita here has been bred in captivity for probably, you know, four or five generations now. So every time you breed them into a generation, oftentimes you're keeping like tame animals or you're working with the animals, that temperament passes down. And so the longer things are kept in captivity and bred in generations, they become more docile. Reticulated pythons back in the 80s were absolutely crazy to keep and really difficult. Now girls like Perdita are absolutely amazing. African rock pythons, certainly one of the giants, probably some Something most people can't handle because they get big and they're kind of difficult to keep. But some reticulated pythons like my girl Perdita here, absolutely incredible. Nice thing about her is that she's not going to get huge because the cowrie ticks are insular island mutations, meaning that they're only going to get maybe 14 foot or something like Whereas, that. Whereas of course some ticks aren't as easy to keep. There's no doubt about that. That's right. Butterscotch can be quite a handful. Speaking of handfuls, I gotta grab a couple handfuls of that poop. <sighs> Connie, snake cook? Please? Mike's gonna have a good time with this one. And Butterscotch, of course, isn't one of our giant snakes. She's pretty big. She's probably closing in on 15 foot right now, and she's definitely getting bigger. She's definitely a little bit difficult to take care of. She's just got that food drive to her that's absolutely ridiculous. When you first go in the enclosure, she wants to eat, and she wants to eat anything that opens up that enclosure. But the thing about reticulated pythons that make them a little bit difficult too is that they do like to climb. They do like a lot of space. They're very intelligent animals. If you don't give them a lot of enrichment, things like climbing and branches and rocks, sometimes they can get a little bit more defensive as well so it's something that you have to consider when you're talking about a retic love retics absolutely incredible animals you know we have some amazing amazing retics here like mike is realizing right now it sometimes can be a handful when you have a retic so much poop up here like we just cleaned this and she just let it all out oh my goodness oh, oh! Can you move that closer please oh that's what you called me over for <laughs> to move catch? the garbage can for you i'm glad i could be of service thanks Connie, butter's coming. Connie, 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 so fast. I'm just trying to get the poop out of here, man. Seems like you're doing a good job. Do you want me to play a bucket? No, 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 watch out. Watch your face. Pretty easy. You know, use the glass. 
Hey, Connie, I'm, I'm filming sorry. here. I'm, 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 I'm teaching. Watch yourself. Oh my God. You almost got taught. We're gonna pair up some lychees. So this girl is a little over three years old. So we're gonna pair her up with this nail. These guys are both GT type B. So maybe I'm gonna find him. He's really pretty, but he's not the friendliest. So I probably am not gonna pull him out. Last year was our first year getting babies and I'm super excited for this year. Here we go. This is our guy here. These guys don't have a name yet. So you can comment down below what you think we should name these two. Hopefully they uh, get along though. So we'll have to do an update maybe in like a week or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys in here. I probably should have introduced these guys maybe like a month or so ago when it was a little bit cooler and I had the light cycle going a little bit like it was dark for longer. Things have been kind of crazy this year. So we're just gonna go ahead and introduce now. You can technically introduce any time of the year. Better to introduce in the colder month. You're less likely to get any aggression towards each other. The other thing we do when we're introducing, we try to do it during the day. We're gonna make sure there's plenty of food in here for these guys. So we're not fighting over food or anything like that. And that's another thing. When you're taking care of giant root ticks or really any giant snake, even like ivy, you should always have a second person on hand. You know, I always talk about if a snake is over maybe like eight foot, you should probably have two people always around. You never know what's gonna happen. Not that they want to kill you, but the fact is, is that sometimes even them kind of just hanging on to you can kind of make you kind of go, oh, and pass off. You don't want to take any chances. Have a second person always spotting, at least someone within earshot, so that if something's going wrong, you'd be like, hey, I need help. Because listen, big snakes are really powerful. I'm basically just this garbage can. You're a great guy. Thank you. But don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to talk you guys out of getting a retick or something like that, because some of these guys are unbelievable. Again, Neo, the motley golden child pied is absolutely stunning. It's a snake that's not going to get that giant. You know, maybe 14, 15 foot max. Don't get me wrong, that's still a big snake, but it's not a 20 footer. So you can definitely find retics that have that really placid, docile, just like Perdita and Neo, and you can find them that they don't get really large. So they're still a great option. I don't want to talk you guys out of anything because I love reticulated pythons so much. These were late this year, but this is from the pair that we already have paired up. I'm super excited. They have, such have big eggs. Babies, I know. They're huge compared to like the crusties and stuff, right? So these guys are crusted gecko eggs here. See the size difference, crazy, right? So this is one of our holdbacks. This is the only male I'm gonna keep this year, just because we have so many males already. Super pink in his bars. When he fires up, it's even like more like pinky red colored. So it's super cool to see these babies. This is like our juvenile already. <laughs> it's one of the first ones that hatched last year. But it's super cool to see them because me and Brian have been working on the lychee project for probably five or six years. And uh, last year was our first year to get babies. What happened to your arm, Jess? Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> that, that beautiful little piece there. I got bit by a mangrove earlier. <laughs> oh, you're alive though. I actually don't know what that is from. Actually, it's that big lychee girl we just put up. <laughs> Reptile life, you know? Yep. This one I'm super excited about too. It's another one of her holdbacks. She, like her mother, has a lot of purple in her bars. Hopefully we can get that to come out a little bit more. I've seen some that are like lime green with purple bars. They're beautiful. Then of course, there's what I call the gentle giants, which are the Burmese pythons. Listen, I'm not trying to tell you guys what to do. What I'm trying to say is that I'm tearing like kind of the pros and cons to giant snake. Like I said, anaconda's amazing. A little bit of work, no doubt about it. Uh, a lot of work, let's put it that way. Reticulated pythons, a little bit more high energy, a little bit more space, a little bit more climbing areas, can sometimes be a little bit more defensive. Definitely very intelligent animals. And then of course you have the Burmese python, which are again, just really, really cool mellow snakes. So in my opinion, hey, if I was gonna say, what big snake do I want the most? It'd be an anaconda. But if I'm giving you guys advice, I think that a Burmese python like Sunrise here is a great starter snake. Now, listen, I want to preface by saying I never like people buying giant snakes so they don't have giant snake experience. So always start smaller. Go with a boa or maybe a carpet python or something like that. And then once you get comfortable and you're ready for one of the giants, maybe a Burmese is a good option because again, they don't climb as much. So you don't need as high of a cage. You don't need all the branches typically. They will climb a bit, but they don't need to. They typically stay on the ground the majority of the time. Like I said, very mellow. They're usually not defensive at all. They're a shield animal, an animal you could put on your lap and watch TV with and they're just going to hang out with you. But you got to remember, Burmese python I do have a little soft spot in my heart for because that's what started this entire adventure in my life. So we're not going to introduce the second pair today, but I do need to get this cage all set up for a male so we can introduce the female in. We really want to introduce the female to the male's territory. Just because females can become really, really protective of their own territory and be really aggressive towards the male. My arms are so bad. You hear that? 
It's annoying. Uh, uh, anyways. So you guys know Freya. This is our new albino baby alligator. Today we're actually going to be doing a handling training session. Ah, gosh, her little nails are so sharp. Mike, what kind of training is this? You or... She got my, my scar. That kind of hurt. We're going to get her to calm down for a second. No danger. I really want to touch those receptors. <laughs> She's so cute. I love all the alligators. Close that mouth. We're going to try to pass her off to Noah. Have you ever held her before? <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, I took her out this the weekend. So I'm going to just hand her off to you. And that way she gets used to the different touches. And that's what we don't want. And that's what we have to work out of her. Because if she starts to squirm like that in a kid's hand, they're either going to drop her, they're going to freak out, think that she's going to turn around and bite. And she's never really tried to bite out of the enclosure. Yeah, she just wants to run away. Which is perfectly a uh, natural instinct for that building. She's looking all around. She's very scared, you can tell. Even when I took her out this weekend, I had to run her for a little while before she eventually calmed down similar like this. And I told the people that you put two hands out. Honestly, yeah, I just told them to put them flat. Slowly placed them in the hands. And I told them, don't touch the back. Just like this. And I just moved really slow. And she sat fine. She's even laying down on my hand. This is what we want. This is a huge start. See if we can't even just touch her back a little bit. Just just a little bit. And look, she's not even moving. Fantastic. You want to take her back? Here, I'll try your hands. You go flat right there. And I'm just going to pull my hand out. And, and she's going to move a little bit. She's still a living creature. You know, even the nicest snakes, they move. That was so much better than the first. So this is just what you have to do, all right? So Mike and I are going to be here for, it's 1 o'clock right now. We're going to be here till about 9 p.m. Just back and forth, back and forth. And you know, well, hang on, pause. Hang on. Probably shouldn't go that long. We don't want to stress her out. And we're open tonight. That's fine, but oh. that's just what you got to do. Okay. I'm ready? I'm ready. All right, watch that thumb. It looks like a chicken piece. All right. Almost there. Speaking of Burmese pythons, we have a handful of beautiful animals that will go on display across the street. You may remember this girl. Her name is Penelope. She's a hypo Burmese python. We got her when she was just a little tiny baby. Actually, my buddy Miguel over at Always Evolving Python sent her to me because it was mean as heck from the day that we got her. She's been a puppy dog and never bit anyone. And I know he was like, what? I can't believe that it was so tame. When he had it, it was a little biter, but she's absolutely incredible. And there's just something about hypo Burmese pythons. They're one of my favorite mutations. You guys know I love Jeffrey, the hypo granite Burmese python. Python. That hypo is just something I absolutely love. The only real berm that I'm hoping I can get this year is a pied berm because those are ridiculous. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember... Only four more hours, Mike. We're almost there.